welcome to Omaha, Nebraska and the CenturyLink Center, the home of Big East basketball and the home of the Creighton Blue Jays as we welcome you to the Ford Fox College Hoops pregame sponsored by Ford. Go further. And tonight, the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions are loose and ready to go. They'll try to knock off the high-flying Blue Jays on their home court tonight. And we welcome you to Fox College Hoops on Fox Sports 2 as the 2-7 and seven Golden Lions take on the 7-2 and two Creighton Blue Jays. Hi, everybody. Alongside three-time NBA champion Dickie Simpkins, I'm Kevin Kugler, and it's a rare thing in college basketball, Dickie. Creighton's got a lot of seniors that lead the way. Kevin, that's a very rare thing when you have a core team of seniors. And when you have senior leadership, it makes a coach's job a little bit easier. And one of those seniors, Doug McDermott, Mr. Efficiency. He's scoring 25 points a game, and Kevin, most importantly, he's 45% from behind the three. A chance to see one of the most dynamic players in the country, and a chance to see Big East basketball coming up next from Omaha, Nebraska on Fox Sports 2. Kevin Kugler, Dickie Simpkins back with you from the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska, Arkansas, Pine Bluff and Creighton getting set to go. George Ivory in his sixth season at the helm of the Golden Lions has a starting lineup that has been pretty much the same most of the year. Davon Haynes will be the lead guy in this lineup. Whiting, Hammond, Robinson, a very talented freshman, and then the man in the middle, Daniel Broughton, 6'8", senior. On the other side for the Creighton Blue Jays, Greg McDermott in his fourth season as head coach. They've shuffled the starting lineup a bit over the last two games and it's really been a benefit for the Jays. Ethan Raggi in, Will Artino out, Chapman, Gibbs, Managa, and of course Doug McDermott rounding out the starting five for the Blue Jays. And since Raggi came in, he's been dominant. Four straight games in double figures. Artino's been averaging nine points, five rebounds off the bench. Sometimes it changes scenery. Does everybody a little bit of good as Creighton controls the tip and we're underway. Well, you're going to see Creighton open up the court. They have a freelance offense where they'll look for three-point opportunities and try to be as efficient as possible. McDermott, they double him immediately, and he's seen that a lot throughout his career. Roggy can hurt you from out there. Can't get the roll that time, and Haynes the rebound. Well, Roggy, that's his shot. He can shoot the three from very deep, Kevin. He, he surprises a lot of bigs when they look at him, and then all of a sudden he pulls up a three. And a takeaway by the Jays, Austin Chapman. And a foul is called. Hammond trying to get back defensively. Tevin Hammond commits the personal. That's his first. Well, Coach Ivory of Arkansas Pine Bluff was very concerned going to, into this game about turnovers. This team has turned the ball over a lot in their past games. Well, they are worst in the SWAC, averaging almost 18 turnovers per game. You cannot do that against the Jays, who love to put the basketball in the hoop. This is a high-scoring Creighton squad. And Grant Gibbs trying to get the Jays on the board. A whistle and a foul underneath, battling for that loose ball. It's going to go against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Tevin Hammond with his second personal foul. Well, when you look around, look at the perimeter play of Creighton, they move the ball efficiently so they can get open shots. I'll have a chance to move it around again. Already foul trouble for Hammond. And the alley -oop to Doug McDermott to start the offense for the Jays. And the lob play ran to perfection on the out-of-bound, baseline out-of-bounds play. Normally, Kevin McDermott's is shooting threes, but he has the ability to play above the rim. What do you expect to see offensively from this Golden Lions squad? The Golden Lions squad, they'll play a lot of ball screen. They'll try to go up-tempo and get Robinson shots. He's a scorer. Hammond playing with those two quick fouls. Brought the fadeaway jumper. That one won't go, but tipped up and in by Trent Whiting. Trent Whiting propelled into the starting lineup because of Marcel's injury. McDermott, the trailer on the play, hits the three. That's a big part of his game, Kevin. It's called the trailer pull-up three jump shot in transition. Second in the nation in scoring. Doug McDermott averaging over 25 points per game. He's already got five to start off the Jays' night tonight. 
on Haynes over to Tevin Hammond. Nice catch by Brought. Brought in some trouble, lost the basketball. Managai going the other way. Numbers if they hurry. Gibbs in the corner to Chapman, back up to Managai. And a good job by the Golden Lions getting back and recovering defensively. Well, that's just a, a key situation by their seniors, knowing to be poised and patient. And then Rogge hurts him with the three. You have to know where Rogge is on the court at all times. Rogge awareness, because he will launch it. Top three-point percentage shooter in the Big East Conference at 51.5% this year. Haynes will try to answer the three, and McDermott the rebound. Only the 15th three that Haynes has taken this year. That's not necessarily his game shooting from behind the arc. No, he's more of a slasher, attack guy. They look to, for him to score a lot. He's their go-to guy. McDermott lost that one. But then it's almost turned over. Robinson hustling. Whiting ahead. And Whiting's finger rolls short. Haynes stays with it. Can't get the roll. And another offensive rebound. Robinson will launch the three. And that rebound tipped over to the Blue Jays. The Golden Lions won't have any easier opportunities than what they just had, Kevin. Two close point-blank shots, offensive rebounds, and then a wide-open three. They have to make those shots. Now the Jays have certainly had some opportunities and taken advantage early. Well, this is just the baseline out-of-bounds play, a simple screen. You have to have awareness. And then McDermott just doing his job, catching it and finishing. Creighton with the 8-2 lead on the floor. Jalen Floyd on for the first time tonight for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and he gets the steal. And that's good defensive awareness, knowing where McDermott is at all times and playing the passing lane. Tevin Hammond, the captain this year of this squad, solid three-point shooter, and a real nice defensive guard. George Ivory says he's one of the best defensive guards he's ever had. Inside, Broughton with nice presence gets the bucket. Broughton's not a big guy, and he's a below-the-rim big, but he can get space, he seals well, and he can finish around the basket. The problem he's had is staying on the floor. He has foul problems. He's already fouled out twice in nine games this year. Yeah, and this game doesn't make it any easier for him. That's why they play this 2-3 zone, so they can keep guys like him and Hammond out of foul trouble. Rogge trying for his second three. McDermott, the offensive rebound, working against Brock. Good defense by Broughton down low. Chapman, Rogge, bobble over there. <laughs> Rocky was already anxious to shoot that three. <laughs> Managa. Now Rocky will get the chance to shoot it. And he drains it. Second time's the charm for Ethan Rocky as it drains home. Second three for Rocky. 11 4 Jays with the lead. The one thing you have to know when you play Creighton, the whole team shoots 44% from the three. In the Big East, and there's a turnover. Managa going the other way. Managa with the layup and the foul. The Jays get the transition game going as the foul comes on Giovanni Robinson, his first, and a chance at a three point play after this one. Managa with the two plus the harm. He'll go to the line when we return. Jays trying to complete a three-point play, 13-4, the lead for Creighton alongside Dickie Simpkins. I'm Kevin Kugler. Let's talk your keys to the game. Well, the Golden Lions have to limit their turnovers. They average 17.6 turnovers a game, like you alluded to earlier. And then they have to go without the scoring droughts. And then Creighton, defend the small ball. The Golden Lions will play small ball. And when you defend it, the next thing you have to do is take advantage of hitting the offensive board's second chance points. And second chance points already five tonight for the Blue Jays. Three turnovers already for Arkansas Pine Bluff. So if they would have just listened to you on the <laughs> Golden Lions side. That's how easy it is. It's Kevin, just that easy. You know what I have to tell you about Dickie's <laughs> keys and you'll, you'll be able to be fine in the game. Creighton did, obviously. Five <laughs> second chance points already. Haynes out to Robinson and now to Whiting. Arkansas Pine Bluff needs a bucket down 10 as Sean Tingle into the game for the first time. Tingle, nice up and under move. And George Ivory was talking earlier today about this young man. He said as soon as he gets confidence, he's going to blossom because he's got all the skills. He's a promising big for Coach Ivory. Very skilled. Footwork is very excellent and efficient in the post. Grant Gibbs, oh, what a pass inside to get it to Doug McDermott. That was a bullet. 
from Grant Gibbs of the foul on Tick. Kevin, one of the things we talked about in the moment opening with is senior, senior leadership. And these guys have played together. They know each other. Gibbs knows how to find McDermott whenever he cuts to the basket. Foul on Trent Whiting, his first, as McDermott at the free throw line hits the first 87% free throw shooter. We've seen him for the three. We saw him dunk earlier. Where's the weakness in his game? I know you've seen it many times over his career. Does he have one? Well, he doesn't really have a weakness. I mean, I, I talk about efficiency. He just he knows when to take shots. He takes good shots and he has a good feel around the basket. Offensively, he really doesn't have a weakness. I would say if it was a weakness, being able to create his own shot. Almost a backcourt violation. Davon Haynes able to track it down. Whiting. Oh, good pass inside to get it to Tingle, who had good position against Ethan Rogge. A very good position. That's called paint ceiling. When you use your body, get wide, and put a defender on your back. That's carving out space. And what you tell a big man when he catches it in the paint, that's your opportunity to just go up and score. Tevin Hammond, who got two quick fouls in the first minute of this game, staying on the floor. They need his leadership and his production. Whiting with the left hand. And the rebound to Will Artino just off the Jays' bench. Whiting is one of the players that the Golden Lions really need to step up. He's very versatile, can play different positions, but they need scoring from him. What's up, son? Devin Brooks also on the floor for the Jays. He's got the basketball right now. Here's McDermott for three. Brooks with the rebound. Artino inside for two. In that second chance points, you have your guard going in, Brooks getting rebounds and sharing the ball with interior passing and an easy layup. 18 to 6, the Blue Jays with the big early lead. Davon Haynes quiet so far. He came in averaging 13 points a game. Long three for Robinson, and he hits the freshman. No fear from shooting deep. Robinson can definitely shoot. They will try to get him open and get him looks. McDermott will back it out to Brooks. Now Artino to Gibbs. McDermott against Whiting. Gibbs inside. Back out McDermott for three. Oh my goodness. Ball movement all over the place and McDermott drains the three. He's got ten. Well, I'm going to say this the whole game. Seniors core on this team, senior leadership, efficient guys, passing the ball, sharing it, and taking open shots. 21 to 9. Creighton already four for seven as a team from three. Haynes off the mark. McDermott the rebound. Managa with Gibbs looking inside, and that's knocked out of bounds by Tevin Hammond. Well, just terrific ball movement by the Jays on that last three. Well, Kevin, it's the holidays. It's sharing the ball. Christmas. <laughs> Give it, they call it givers. Being able to get an extra pass, make the extra pass, and you have an open look and splash a knockdown three. So McDermott will get a breather right now, just ahead of the under-12 timeout. Greg McDermott sits his star and son on the bench for the moment. Avery Dingman will lob it in. Here's Rogge. He can certainly score in a hurry. Can't hit that one. Artino with the offensive rebound and the putback. Why has he been so much better over the last couple of games off the bench? Well, sometimes when you make some changes in your rotation and you bring a guy off of the bench, he kind of gets a new surge, a new life, some more energy, and he's a little bit more focused on his role when he comes in the game. He's got four points and a couple of rebounds already off the bench today. Over the last two games, nine points, five rebounds a game. Yeah, he came into the Nebraska game, the last game that Creighton won, and he was very efficient in rebounding, putbacks, and scoring in the paint. Had his best scoring game of the game before in his first game off the bench against Long Beach State, put 13 on the board. Managa with six on the shot clock. Managa going to have to force this. Here's Brooks with one to shoot. And Brooks does not draw any iron. And that is a shot clock violation and a timeout on the floor. 11.33 remaining in the first half. The Jays have been doing it from the outside, but even when those shots don't fall, some help from the inside, and Will Artino helps the Jays to a big early lead.
They're the Big East's top three-point shooting team, and they're off to a good start. Well, when you see a three, be a three. Raggy knocking it down, and this is what he does. What goes up must come down. And then the star, trail of three-point shot, and you have to know where he is at all times. Nothing but lining it up, knocking it down, nothing but net. Three things you need to know about Creighton from three. They've made 107 this season. That's second in the NCAA. They average over 11 made per game, also second in the country. And at 44% this year, they're sixth in the NCAA. They're 44.4% tonight. I'd say they're right on pace. <laughs> they're definitely on pace, but to have that part of your game be such a strong piece of making shots. So that means, Kevin, when you play against teams, if they play in a zone, if they try to play tough man to man, if you get yourself open, this team, Creighton, can shoot the ball. Dingman over to Isaiah Zierden, just off the Creighton bench. Brooks trying to attack that zone and loses the basketball. Good effort, but it's out of bounds off of the Golden Lions. Yeah, when you're attacking a 2-3 zone, you definitely want to penetrate the zone on either a dribble or on a pass, and you want to get your best playmaker in the middle, like Brooks. Kevin Brooks, the junior from Harlem. First native New Yorker for the Jays since the 2005-2006 season, and he could be an electric player. Nice pass down low, driving it up Artino and his foul. Again, ball movement for the great Blue Jays, creating a shot opportunity inside. Very good ball move, movement, and Brooks, good court vision. And then you have to be down on the baseline and available. I think the only thing, Artino needs to catch that and go into the defense with his right shoulder. He kind of opened up. Luckily, he got fouled, and now he's at the free throw line. Fifth team foul on Arkansas Pine Bluff, first on Jalen Floyd, and Artino missing on that first free throw, just 5 of 12 this season at the line and they'd love to see somebody continue to step up in the post because that's been one of the areas that the Jays have looked for some help in this year is that post position. I think that'll be important in Biggie's play is if they can establish a post presence offensively and Artino needs to be that guy at 6'11". Tevin Hammond with his team down 24 to 9. Look at Artino out getting the steal. Brooks the no look to Zierden. Brooks is hammered as Zierden still down on the floor and Brooks will go to the line. Well that all started because of the 6'11 center using his length and playing the passing lane. He's getting out there getting steals like a guard under control sharing the ball and then here we go with sharing it again second chance opportunities send you to the free throw line. Like a young Dickie Simpkins out there. <laughs> well, I can tell you this, Kevin. If Artino continues to do those type of things on a defensive part of the game, he'll continue to get more minutes where he can be a presence offensively. Brooks at the line. Good on the first. McDermott back in. Haynes back in for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Artino will get a breather. Five points, two rebounds in some limited minutes. Not a bad start for the big man. That's productivity right there. That's what you want from your big coming off the bench. Be productive. Give us a spark. Brooks hits both free throws. 26 to 9. Jays with 10 points off turnovers. Five Golden Lion turnovers in this first half. Well, the Golden Lions are going to need to figure out how they get Haynes available and open to get on the scoring and get it going for this team. 0 for 3 so far for Haynes, and now a charge sends it the other way. Haynes picks up his first personal foul. Wasn't thrilled with the call. The Jays will try to build on an 8-0 run. Well, Dingman just moving his feet, cutting them off. Haynes did his, dipped his little shoulder a little bit by trying to over penetrate Kevin Dingman now for the Jays out to Austin Chapman Roggy in the corner and you see Doug McDermott floating around the free throw line that's your playmaker and then he has the ability to step out Zierden open for three and the rebound inside for DeAndre McIntyre McIntyre is an explosive jumper for his size. He has athleticism, and he can play above the rim. He comes in and provides energy at the point guard position, but he's more of a scorer. Began his career at Faulkner State before transferring over to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Still a relatively young team. They're going to return almost everybody on this roster next year for Arkansas Pine Bluff. So this is a 
this is not just a one-year project for Coach George Ivory. No, and they're a very good team. They were 15-3 in the SWAC last year. The three for Broughton, no good. For Broughton, just his 12th attempt from behind the arc, but a new 35. There's Tevin Hammond. He's been quiet tonight, saved two fouls. Got it inside the Broughton, who missed from point blank range. Another easy look that goes by the boards. When you're in a game like this and you get those easy opportunities, you must finish. And Roggy wide open for three, and McDermott able to stay with it, gets the rebound, and he's fouled. Another second chance opportunity for the Blue Jays off the miss. Kevin, one of the things I like about Doug McDermott is he can shoot the ball, he can post up, he takes a lot of shots from the perimeter, but he is willing to scrum it up inside in the paint on offensive rebounds. That'll serve him well, not only throughout the rest of his college career this year as he hits his 19th straight free throw, but when he goes on to the next level, they're going to be expecting him to play some physical basketball. Well, he can definitely play physical basketball at the next level, and, and the fact that he can add to a team, to ability to get a team a second shot, another opportunity, is a great addition to his skill set. McDermott hits them both. He's got 12 points and five rebounds already and still 855 to play in the first half. <laughs> well, did I say he was Mr. Efficient? Here's a guy <laughs> for this season, 123 points in 124 minutes. Tevin Hammond with his first bucket. 28-11. Jays by 17. And a steal brought and got a hand on that one. Hammond navigating up, but he couldn't hit Haynes in transition. And it'll go out of bounds to the Jays. Well, Hammond is doing his job. He's the floor general for this Golden Lions team. He's pushing it. His eyes are up, seeing who's running the court. And Devin, in transition, you have to catch the ball. Coaches always say two-hand catches, not one-hand catches. Haynes started at Bowling Green, transferred out of there, and came to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Last year averaged 12.7 rebounds a game. A little bit better this year. From a statistical standpoint, they've played a tough non-conference so far, have these golden lines. And a steal by Hammond. Hammond trying to beat everybody down the floor, and he does with the left hand. Well, he's one of their better defenders. He plays the passing lane. Here's a guy with two fouls, and he's still being aggressive defensively. Leads the SWAC in steals this season. Got the bucket there in transition. He's got four. 20 to shoot for the Jays, who lead it by 15. Little floater by Austin Chapman. That was pretty. You got to float the boat. He <laughs> put it up there, and it had hang time, and there's no way to block that. Zierden got a hand on that one. Stays with the Golden Lions. Robinson around the screen of Broughton. Hammond backs up for two. And Hammond's starting to heat up. He's got six. He's being aggressive offensively. That was close right there. The referees could have called him for an offensive push off. But nevertheless, an excellent step back move. He's got to be careful playing with those two fouls. He's done a good job so far. Got the two in the first minute of the game. Yeah, and there was no way Coach Ivory could have took him out of the game, even though he had those quick two. He's a very important factor for this team. Turnover to the Golden Lions. DeAndre McIntyre had the steal, and now the three for Hammond. He's starting to feel it a little bit. A whistle and a foul underneath Gibbs with the push of Davon Haynes, and the foul on Grant Gibbs will keep it with the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Trying to get things going, but the offense of the Jays, too much to overcome. Chapman's floater makes it a 15-point game. Creighton 30, Arkansas Pine Bluff 15, 652 remaining in the first half here in Omaha. Tomorrow, Big East basketball presented by New York Life Insurance Company continues as the University of San Francisco Dons take on the St. John's Red Storm at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1, while Houston Baptist collides with DePaul at 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 2. Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 are your homes for Big East basketball all season long. The Jays in the new Big East this this year and off to a tremendous start tonight 30 to 15 the advantage for the Blue Jays and they'll press a little bit as the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions inbound off the bench Chandler Savage on the floor for the first time for the Golden Lions three for McIntyre and the rebound to Ethan Rogge 
And then it goes out of bounds off of Rogge. It hit the bottom of the backboard and then went out over the baseline. So it'll belong to Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's a good call, Kevin. But if you look at the Golden Lions right now, I talked about this earlier. They're a small ball right now. If you look at their lineup, the tallest guy they have in the game is Whiting, as we see if it went off the backboard. Let's see. It got poked out, looked like maybe by Trent Whiting. Crowd certainly not agreeing with the call, but Golden Lions will take any extra possessions they can get. Whiting, the tallest guy in the lineup right now at 6'7. He's their center. This is small ball basketball. And this doesn't surprise you to see them go with this small lineup, does it? No, it absolutely doesn't. You know, I figured at some point in time they would go small ball to kind of speed up the game, be able to press, play the passing lanes a little faster, have guys who can go off the dribble. McIntyre trying to hit that jumper, the rebound to Doug McDermott for the Blue Jays. McDermott with 12 points, five rebounds. Now this is where Creighton has to be patient again, and when they shoot, this should definitely open up opportunities for second chance points. Chapman with the dish. Here's McDermott, 13 to shoot. Gibbs inside. Rogge with nine to shoot. A little bit strong in the rebound to Whiting. Jays are old for their last five from three. Well, when a team plays small ball and you take threes and you're not making it, you're playing into their hands. One for seven overall from the field in their last seven attempts. So Creighton's gone a little bit cold, but Golden Lions not able to take advantage. McIntyre. There's Robinson against Managon. Nine on the shot clock for Whiting. And Whiting turns it over. Hammond went one way, the ball went the other. There was a little miscommunication there. He, Hammond was going to backdoor cut. Whiting thought he was going to pop out. That's a little bit of just knowing each other and chemistry. Whiting just propelled into the starting lineup. So those are things that he has to pick up. Yeah, Whiting didn't see a lot of time at all last year. Just one point per game and very limited time off the bench. The alley-oop try for McDermott. Can't get the roll, but he's going to go to the line. Gibbs trying to feed his superstar, Trent Whiting, with his second personal foul. And Creighton just ran the same lob pass. This was just out of the half-court offense instead of the baseline out of bounds. The Golden Lions have to recognize that, and it's a wide-open opportunity. McDermott, four for four tonight at the line. Devin Brooks back in for the Jays. Austin Chapman over the bench. The reigning Big East Player of the Week. Third time in four weeks that they've given out the award that that man, Doug McDermott, has claimed it already. Well, I think it's easy to say that right now. He started off the season as the favorite of the big, to be the Big East Player of the Year. Hammond getting through the defense, but... A double dribble is how he got through and the turnover back to Creighton. And Hammond saying somebody tapped the ball out of his hand from behind, so he felt like he had another chance to dribble it again. Four forty-two to play in this first half. Creighton by 17. Grant Gibbs. Rotates around Brooks now. Looking inside for McDermott. They find him. And then back out to Rogge alone for three, and he hits that one. Rogge gets that shot because you put your playmaker in the middle, and whenever you get a pass in the middle in the zone, you look opposite if you don't have the open shot. And who was opposite? Rogge for an open three. Three for eight from Rogge, all from three. He's got nine points. Largest lead of the night for the Blue Jays. Davon Haynes. The fadeaway is good, and Haynes finally on the board. That's his first bucket. And he's going to have to carry that over throughout the rest of this half so he can give the Golden Lions a spark. McDermott for three. Whiting the board. And Arkansas Pine Bluff down by 18 going to work. Hammond on the drive is fouled. And Tevin Hammond with that quick first step picks up the foul on Devin Brooks. But the Jays find in the perimeter once again. Ethan Rogge camping out in the corner, hits the three. 18 point Blue Jay lead.
Creighton 35, Arkansas Pine Bluff 17. Kevin Kugler alongside Dickie Simpkins back in Omaha. Friday, January 3rd, one of the best bowl games of the year is on Fox as the 13th ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys take on James Franklin and the 8th ranked Missouri Tigers. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is Friday, January 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox. Doug McDermott, 14 points, six rebounds. Ethan Raggi with nine points for the Blue Jays, each with multiple three-pointers made tonight. In fact, they have made all of the Jays made three-pointers as Tevin Hammond goes to the line for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And that's Doug McDermott with 14 points in 14 minutes. He's, I, be he's... I believe efficiency was the word you used. <laughs> yeah, I mean, doesn't get any better than that. I mean, he came into this game 123 points to 124 minutes. Brooks. Jays in their first game in nine days. Finals week is over, so you got to imagine everybody's feeling a little more relaxed feeling a little better about life now that that's done. Back out on the basketball court. Eight to shoot for Gibbs. Managa with four on the shot clock. Managa, the long three. And the rebound inside for Savage. Good defense by the Golden Lions. Jays didn't really have a good shot. Savage now on the attack. Well, that was the defense the Golden Lions needed because they, Creighton went the whole shot clock. If they were to get up a second chance at the end, that would have been tough. But the turnover number 10 for the Golden Lions and then a foul on Davon Haynes. A little defensive work here by the Jays. Well, Gibbs did the right thing. He's fronting. He's trying to get around and front a score. And if you front a score, you have help on the backside, and then you can get your hand on the lob pass. Line, shooting two for the Jays is number 10, Grant Gibbs. Haynes is frustrated tonight, Dickie. Two points, two fouls. You can see it on his face. Very frustrated. And when you come into this game and you're a main player for your team, that means the opposite team is going to key on you. So you have to figure out. Your coach has to figure out. Your teammates have to figure out. How do we get you the ball to make the game easier for you? Gibbs good on both free throw attempts. First two points tonight for Grant Gibbs. Robinson over to Whiting. Hammond, long three. Roggy the rebound. For Roggy, that's his second board. Jays hustling it up the floor. Managa on the drive. He is fouled. And Managa to the line for a pair. Well, I like how Creighton took advantage of that defensive rebound. They pushed it out in a fast break opportunity. It was one pass, kick up court. Here you have the rebound by Groggy. He doesn't hold on to it, kicks it up to Gibbs. One dribble, pass up, one dribble, attack the basket. That is a fast break transition opportunity that you have to take advantage of. Free throw good for Managa. Doesn't see a lot of attempts. That's only his fifth free throw of the year. He's only. Had five attempts. He's made five as Whiting sits down, brought him back in. Well, he's more of a, a defensive vocal leader for this team, an energy guy. He's their best defender. And he knows who he's playing with. Again, he's a guy who's a, a senior, knows the guys around him, and knows that there are offensive threats. 39-18. Arkansas Pine Bluff, 10 fouls, 10 turnovers, 8 field goals. That field goal number is not the one you want to be the lowest of those three. Looking inside to Brock. Brock, nice work against Will Artino. And that's just physicality right there, the strength of Walton's upper body just wedging his way in and finishing at the basket. Managa. Back to Gibbs. McDermott in the corner. Haynes got out quickly. Back around to Brooks. Brooks going to work. Threw it off the backboard. 
And it goes out of bounds to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coming up at the half, Rob Stone and Bill Raftery will be in our Fox Sports studios. Where does Doug McDermott rank among the top players in the country? Bill Raftery will give you his thoughts. And Raft's Onion Report, who's the most impressive team this season and who takes home Raft's Onion Award for the week? That's coming up at the half. Giovanni Robinson with his squad down 19, minute 20 to go until halftime. Well, you have to go back to the big fella. He just scored on your last possession. I would have rather see them get it a little bit closer to the block, take advantage of attacking the basket like he did last time. McDermott dumps it into the corner. Good position down low for Artino. That's where you wanted Broughton on the other end. I wanted Broughton to do the same thing. That was good perimeter passing. And then Artino slips in, turns the zone defense into man-to-man -man by filling in the paint. Ames backing up with 18 on the shot clock. Ball knocked away and out of bounds off the Jays. Managa trying to keep that one in play. He could not. Jalen Floyd coming back into the game for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Golden Lions shooting 37% from the floor in the first half, but just one of seven from three. Jays are out rebounding them, but more importantly, the turnovers. Creighton really cashing in, Dickie. Ten turnovers for Arkansas Pine Bluff. 18 points off those ten turnovers. Well, that was one of the keys I talked about early in the game. Coach Ivory was concerned about the turnovers, and obviously they averaged 17 a game. But right now, Arkansas Pine Bluff, it's imperative that they try to get offensive scoring right here in the final seconds of the half. discussion with coach McDermott first there was a visit to the scorers table foul situation 10 for Pine Bluff only three in this first half for the Blue Jays and the crowd was very quiet to help coach McDermott <laughs> be able to hear what the referee was saying eight to shoot for Hammond who gets it down low to McIntyre nice reverse by DeAndre McIntyre and a timeout 28 seconds remaining in the first half. Creighton with a 41-22 lead. Kevin Kugler alongside Dickie Simpkins with the Creighton Blue Jays leading Arkansas Pine Bluff 41-22. 28 seconds remaining in the first half. Coach McDermott taking that use it or lose it timeout to talk things over before the end of the first half. Yeah, and then it's an opportunity for Coach McDermott to have his team work on execution coming on a timeout right before half because this Creighton team will see situations like this in the Big East. Needing a timeout before half and needing an important basket, so why not work on that in this particular situation? Here? It's such an experienced lineup, you wouldn't think necessarily that would be something that Coach McDermott would want to do, but he's always coaching this squad, one of the most experienced in all of college basketball. Well, you always want to use opportunities to get repetition, to get skill training, and understand that these are key situations that we need to continue to work on. Nine seconds and counting remaining in the first half. Austin Chapman. Gibbs with four seconds. Chapman in the corner. The three for Managa is good as halftime is here. Jahens Managa rains it down to make it a 44-22 halftime lead. I don't know if that's the way the play was made to run, but when you get a made shot, it makes a coach look good. You have the kick. Managa gets to the corner, lets it fly, and knocks it down. Coach drew up a play. I don't know if it turned out the way it's supposed to, but a made shot makes you look great, Kevin. Managa with the three. His first three of the first half. Not a bad time for it for the Blue Jays as we've reached the end of the first half here in Omaha with our score. Creighton 44, Arkansas Pine Bluff 22. Stay tuned after the break. Rob Stone and Bill Raftery will be in our Fox Sports studios for our halftime report. The Jays with their biggest lead of the game and it comes at halftime 44 to 22.
Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska, the CenturyLink Center, where we're about ready to get started in the second half with the Creighton Blue Jays leading Arkansas Pine Bluff 44 to 22. Alongside three-time NBA champion Dickie Simpkins, I'm Kevin Kugler, and it is the season of giving. So let's take a look at some of the gifts that the Blue Jays have handed out in this first half. Absolutely. Being in the spirit of giving on this Christmas holiday, pass, 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 and groggy with a corner three. Look how quick the ball moves, the precision on the pass, and then Groggy again benefiting from the sharing. And the seniors just passing, giving each other the ball, and Art Artino down low in the paint. Sharing is caring. And they've cared a lot in this first half. 50% shooting, only six turnovers for the Jays. You see the second chance points, 10 assists for Creighton as part of that full sharing theme. And 18 points for Creighton off turnovers. You said at the top of the broadcast that Arkansas Pine Bluff had to limit their turnovers. They have not, and the Jays have made them pay as the foul. Davon Haynes on the drive. The foul going against Grant Gibbs for the Blue Jays. Yeah, you can't have both. You're giving up 18 points off of turnovers, and you're giving up 13 points in second chance opportunities. You have to really limit one of them. We know that they're outmatched as far as size, but you have to limit the turnovers. Haynes at the line, a little bit strong, but he got the roll. He's just a 60% free throw shooter, but talking with Coach Ivory, and he says, Davon Haynes is quite simply a guy we cannot do without. We've got to have him on the floor, and he's got to be productive for us to be successful. Absolutely. He's a preseason all SWAT conference selection. He has to be productive for this team. You see they came out in the second half, and Hammond found him quick to try to get him going to produce for this second half if they're going to have a chance. Chapman to McDermott against Broughton, and a foul is called on Daniel Broughton that'll send Doug McDermott to the free throw line 14 points eight rebounds in that first half for the All-American Doug McDermott and Hammond is telling Broughton right there when you're getting posted up McDermott gets it you have to keep your hands straight up he bent his arms over and hands over and that's an easy call for the referee you've talked about the efficiency of Doug McDermott 138 points in 142 minutes at home this season. He's been efficient all over the place, but certainly at the CenturyLink Center, he has very much found his comfort level this year. That's the kind of player that you want on your team, especially when you have that type of efficiency. You know and can rely on him on the offensive end of the court. Freshman Giovanni Robinson finds Hammond, who goes inside to Brock. Broughton got good position, missed that one. Whiting with an other chance. Robinson back to Whiting for three. And the rebound to Managa. And on that possession, the Golden Lions had two good looks, one in the paint and one from three. Didn't capitalize on either one. Nice play by Haynes to tip that pass and start it the other way. Devon Haynes backing it out to Tevin Hammond. Arkansas Pine Bluff down by 22. Hammond on the drive all the way to the basket. Broughton with the rebound, and then he falls and travels. Blue Jay basketball. Well, starting off this second half, the Golden Lions are getting the opportunities they want offensively. Drives to the basket, second chance opportunities, open threes, Hammond driving hard, but they're not coming up with anything. They're working so hard, and they're coming up short. So Austin Chapman will... Walk it the other way for the top scoring offense in the Big East. Creighton averaging over 83 points per game this year. Had some fits and starts tonight in their first game back after the nine day layoff, but certainly a comfortable game for Creighton. Man, I got trying to add to it, cannot. Offensive rebound for Ethan Rogge. And it's out of bounds to the Blue Jays. And they have final exams this week, and they come off of using your brain power, your brain energy, <laughs> studying for tests. You come into this game where you have to refocus your mind basketball-wise. The nice thing about this time of year is you don't have to refocus it while still doing anything with your classes. You've got a couple of weeks to just concentrate on basketball. Absolutely. You'll just be seeing the gym, your room, the shower, practice, and games. They've got a big one coming up this weekend against Cal on Sunday on Fox Sports 1. Rogge with the three, a little bit strong. 
And in the corner, rebounded by Davon Haynes. Well, if you're a player, you have to love to play in Coach McDermott's offense. It's a freelance offense. The opportunity to score is for everybody. And if you have an open look, you have to let it fly. Hammond had an open look, and he hit the three. Hammond with his first made three. He's got ten points. And the six-foot guard is having to step up offensively and defensively for this team. Grant Gibbs on the drive, and Gibbs tied up on his way to the basket. Possession arrow keeps it with the Blue Jays. Gibbs inbound. Chapman able to save it, gets it down low to Gibbs. His shot blocked by Haynes. Davon Haynes starting to assert himself a little bit more early in the second half. Using his athleticism to protect the rim. And then the three again for Tevin Hammond. Back-to-back -back threes for the junior for Arkansas Pine Bluff. The Jays 0 for 4 from the field in this half, and Arkansas Pine Bluff creeps to within 16. Well, Coach Ivory said that Hammonds was the toughest guy on this team, and you see that toughness right now, that competitiveness. He wants to win this game. He wants to give this team a chance. He had 16 against Morehouse College. That's his best game. He's got 13 tonight. And now the Jays 0 for 5 from the floor in this second half. As Arkansas Pine Bluff will walk it up. A little more spring in their step right now. Well, I would say that spring in their step was probably comes from a result of a good talking at halftime by Coach <laughs> Ivory. Broughton will back out for three. And the rebound to Chapman. Pass inside Gibbs. Nice touch to McDermott. McDermott shot blocked and then a foul is called. That'll go on Davon Haynes. You have to like Creighton's passing. They're perimeter passing, but most importantly right there, they're interior passing. Being able to catch the ball, recognize guys cutting to the basket, and able to deliver. Perimeter pass, pass, pass. McDermott's so good at moving without the ball and the interior passing in the paint, which you don't find many teams to be able to do that. When you have the experience together that Gibbs and McDermott have, it's rare in college basketball these days to have all this time that these two guys have played together, and Gibbs getting that sixth year this year. How big of an advantage is that for your team on the offensive end? I think mean, chemistry is very big. The advantage of playing together for so long is very important. It's an, it gives you an edge. And then Gibbs is one of, he led the MVC last year in assists. And when you have a guy who's good in assists and a guy who can score, that combination is perfect. Daniel Broughton called for the offensive foul. Coach Ivory not excited about that as his team tries to claw back in. Still down 18 on the road. Duke on to the final four on the way to their second straight national title. Leitner, by the way, in that game, 31 points. Perfect 10 for 10 shooting and 10 for 10 from the line that night. 10 for 10 from the line is also where Doug McDermott is tonight in tonight's Creighton 48-30 lead over Arkansas Pine Bluff. That Christian Leitner shot was a shot to remember. Trivia question for you, Kevin. Who threw the pass to Leitner? Hmm. Thomas Hill. Grant Hill. Oh, <laughs> I knew it was a hill. You get half a point. <laughs> <laughs> McDermott missing the three. No look from Gibbs. McDermott on the drive, and he'll go to the line. What a great pass by Gibbs and McDermott. Driving it up draws the foul on Chandler Savage. And there was another opportunity where you saw second chance opportunities by Creighton. And then you saw assist man to scoring man. That combination again. Gibbs just knowing where McDermott is. McDermott rep recognizing the cut straight to the basket. In comes Jalen Floyd. Whiting will head out for Arkansas Pine Bluff. The one thing about scores, Kevin, is that they have the ability to find many ways to put the ball in the basket. You know, catch and shoot McDermott can do, you know, moving off the off without the ball, diving down the lane and posting up. McDermott ties a career high with that last free throw. He's made 28 straight at the line. Robinson left alone for three. I watched him in shoot around today. He did not miss from that spot on the floor. Well, they're going to need him to Act like there's a shoot around in the second half and start, <laughs> and start making some of those. Hammond on the drive is fouled on the floor before he can 
get to the basket by Jahens Managa, who commits the personal. First on Managa, second on the Jays as a team. And Chandler Savage will inbound into Hammond, and Hammond is blocked by Chapman, but a foul is called. Austin Chapman got enough ball initially that the call didn't come, but on the way down, a little body to Tevin Hammond. Was that the battle of the six feet guard? <laughs> this is a battle of little ball right here. One six foot guard going at the other. Chapman says, let me, let me block this shot right here. A small ball at its finest right there, Kevin. <laughs> It's not often you get to see two guards going at it in the post <laughs> like that. No, no, that was that was a good one right there. I, I like to see guards compete like that. See the field goal situation in the second half. Jay is still looking for their first bucket in the second half. And now the Golden Lions were showing a little one two two half court press to kind of speed it up. See if they can come up with a steal. Late in the game last week against Nebraska that you saw on Fox Sports 1, Jays had some problems in the second half against Nebraska pressure. They were up big in that game. As the three is no good, rebound tipped over to Hammond. Hammond had numbers for a moment, and then the foul is called on Austin Chapman. Kevin, you were absolutely right. Creighton did go through a segment in that Nebraska game where they struggled to get the ball past half court. They didn't handle the pressure well, and then eventually they got it together. They got the, the guy in the middle who's a playmaker could handle the ball, which was usually McDermott, and then they were able to break the press. Tevin Hammond at the line. He had a slow start tonight with those two quick fouls, but he has rebounded nicely. 15 points for Hammond, same that he had against Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. And if you think that sounds like a tough schedule for Arkansas Pine Bluff, it has been. They have been on the road all year. Not one game in their home court. And they will not play a game at home until January 18th. George Ivory packs the bags, and they stay packed for months at a time. We're well, talking to Coach Ivory. That is on purpose. That helps this Golden Lion team for the SWAC conference. You got to keep in mind, Coach Ivory has done an excellent job. They finished second last year, tied for second, with a record of 15 and 3. McDermott with the turnaround at the foul line. Rebound tipped over to Brooks. Nice save by Artino. Brooks on the drive all the way to the basket. He'll draw the foul. And Devin Brooks heads to the free throw line. Foul on Chandler Savage. That's his third personal. Three on Broughton, three on Haynes, and now this one, the third on Savage. Well, Devin Brooks, a little New York City, straight from Harlem move, the inside out, left hand dribble to attack the basket. Inside out, one of the favorite dribbles I like because it's very effective. You get a guy off balance and you attack right at the rim. Brooks good on that free throw. Three points tonight, all at the line. For Devin Brooks came over from Iowa Western Community College which is just across the river from here in Omaha in Council Bluffs Iowa Brooks the native of Harlem scored over a thousand points in his two year junior college career Hammond he'll just launch the three and he'll hit it Tevin Hammond with a new season high as Hammond Hits his third three of the night and an offensive foul against Brooks and the Jays. Well, I told you Tevin Hammond is living for the moment. He's stepping up for this Golden Lions team offensively and defensively. You see him here spotting up. He can't get the ball to Devin Haynes, and he just pulls up. I'm going to rise up and knock it down, and then here he is, stepping up, giving his body for the team, competing. He wants a chance to win. 19 points on six of nine shooting from the floor for Hammond. He'll try it again. Hammond feeling it, but that one a little off. A little heat check, a little heat <laughs> check right there, Kevin. McDermott, Gibbs. Nowhere to go for Gibbs and the Jays, and the offense all at the free throw line in this second half for Creighton. Still maintaining a comfortable lead, despite not hitting a field goal to this point. McDermott. 
steps out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover back to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Good defense against the All-American Doug McDermott. Well, you asked me about any weaknesses on Doug McDermott earlier in the game, and I said if there was any weakness for him offensively, that would be the ability to create on the bounce and create shots for himself. Right here, just hasn't established the ability to beat guys off the dribble yet. Struggling against an athletic Haynes. Haynes moving his feet, cutting them off, and just bumping them a little bit. That's the part of the game that I would say Doug McDermott could still work on. Hammond with the spin, a little bit strong, and the rebound tipped over to Managa. Hammond has scored the last 12 points for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Gibbs, the bounce knocked away, but saved. Martino. Well, the energy level certainly up for the Golden Lions defensively. They're flying all over the court, but McDermott inside a little too strong. And that was a paint point right there, a paint basket, just catching it with a good seal, right hand jump hook. Savage looking down low for Davon Haynes. They're fronting him. Savage will drive it up himself. No good. Out of bounds off of Haynes. And it goes to the Jays. Arkansas Pine Bluff's energy level has definitely gone up. And I think that's because of Hammonds. I think that's because of the talk at halftime. And then by Arkansas Pine Bluff having a couple of baskets, getting a little scoring going, that gives them some energy. It says, hey, we can compete a little bit. And despite the fact that the Jays only have the one field goal in the second half, their leads only shrunk four points from the halftime margin of 22 to where it is now at 18. Well, when you, when you get a big, comfortable lead like that, you know, it takes a lot to chip into that. Managa for three. Rebound. Pulled down by Avery Dingman. Sky and high for the board. McDermott. Nice look inside. Artino misses the jam. Little indecision there by the big man. Am I going to lay it in or am I going to dunk it? Yeah, he was caught between. He probably should have just used his left hand and reversed on the other side of the basket. Came back, though, for a good defensive play, did Artino. Here's Chapman on the push. McDermott, the leaner, won't go, but Artino is there. The tip try, no good. Rebound tipped out. Trying to battle for it. Chapman, what a save! And that's the kind of hustle you want to see from your guard. Artino. Well, he had a little guy down low. Dingman will try the three. No good in whiting the rebound. Artino was matched up against six foot three DeAndre McIntyre. And you have to throw the ball to Artino. Just throw up in the air, let him catch it. He does a good job of keeping it high when he has it around the basket. Out of the hands of Haynes and out of bounds to Creighton. 11 02 to play in this one. The Creighton Blue Jays with a 54 36 lead at home, trying for their eighth win of the season. Creighton 54, Arkansas Pine Bluff 36, 11 02 remaining in the second half. Tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, don't miss Fox Sports Live as Jay and Dan bring you all the highlights from a full day of college basketball, the NBA, and the NHL. Fox Sports Live is tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Well, we've seen a spark from Arkansas Pine Bluff, and it's Tevin Hammond. The six-foot guard from Little Rock, Arkansas, stepping it up offensively, and he's knocking down shots from behind the three-point arc. He's known to be their leader, controls the team, but he's having to step up offensively tonight. Season high, 19 points, six for 11 from the floor for Tevin Hammond. 17th in the SWAC and scoring this year. That'll rise a little bit with his performance tonight. Absolutely. And I think six foot may be a little generous right now. <laughs> he looks like he might be 5'8. Anybody saw the open of this broadcast, me standing next to you, <laughs> making Tevin Hammond look gigantic. <laughs> Whiting with the foul, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Well, the Jays have had a hard time getting things going. Look at the numbers in the second half. One for 14 from the floor, Dickie. Yeah, that, their field goal percentage in the second half is uh, drastically taking a hit. And they're getting opportunities inside the paint, by the basket. They're getting good looks off the pass. And that's one of the things, you know, coming off of, I'm not trying to make excuses for Creighton, but coming off of a long week of exams, let's get back out here, let's get our rhythm, can affect the guy when he comes out to, sh to shoot and score after being off for a while. 
Tino's free throw, no good. Haynes the rebound. And with all that said, you look at the scoreboard, Craig's still got a 19-point lead. They've not been threatened in this game. No, they haven't. I think even though Tevin Hammond has been able to add some scoring power a little bit, the Golden Lions still have turned the ball over and have missed some shots themselves. Haynes hits that one on the baseline. Just his second made field goal, the leading scorer for the Golden Lions this year. He's had a slow night tonight, just six points. Well, he had 18 points in their last game, but that's the aggressiveness that we needed to see in the first half to help kind of contribute to this team's form. Ten minutes to go. Chapman on the penetration, dishing to Brooks. Here's Rogge for three. Ethan Rogge with his fourth made three tonight. He's got 12. How about Rogge right there? Hey, look what just fell into my hands. <laughs> An open three ball. And you notice he's not shy about shooting the three. <laughs> he is definitely not shy about that. He's going to let it fly. That's one thing you don't have to worry about. McIntyre gives it off to Broughton. 13 to shoot Davon Haynes. Haynes will force that one up, and he draws some contact from Avery Dingman. And that was just Haynes coming off of just making the baseline jump shot. You know, when you're a scorer, you're the main guy for your team. And you just made a shot. You're going to most likely come back down and get up another attempt. Each team's been whistled for six. Six, six fouls, rather, in this second half. And that'll send Haynes on that shooting foul to the line for a pair. And Haynes missing for the first time tonight at the line. He's two for three. Davon Haynes, Detroit native. He's been a guy that's been hard to keep off the floor this year. 34 minutes per game. Missing both free throws, though. And just a 60% shooter this year at the line. Now the Golden Lions will have to extend their zone a little bit, put a little bit more pressure on Creighton. Try to come up with some steals here in the passing lane. Got the hands on that one, but couldn't get the possession. That's real physical inside with Artino, who finally gets the position he wants. Great feed Avery. to Avery Dingman. And that's just understanding the game, Dingman reading the offense, where the ball went to, and reading the defense, seeing that the back was turned to him, and he just backdoor fell. McIntyre with a left hand. Rocky the board. Looks to push. Lost it from behind. McIntyre trying to get a hand on it. Martino back out to Rocky. In the corner, Artino with 20 to shoot. Brooks in all kinds of traffic. Finds Artino for the two. Artino. Now Tino benefiting right there, being right in the paint. A nice drop pass to him. And again, taking advantage of the Golden Lions being small and finishing at the rim. Largest lead of the night now for the Blue Jays, 62 to 38. 24-point lead for Creighton. The three from Brock. And the rebound to Brooks. Rogge, his shot thrown out of bounds by Davon Haynes, skying there on the Rogge three. Timeout on the floor, 7.42 remaining in the second half, and Will Artino going to work inside, gets the two to help add to the Jays' lead. 62-38, Creighton with the lead, 7.42 remaining in the ball game, and now class is in session as we welcome Professor Dickey Simpkins. Kevin, let Professor Dickey take you in the lab. We have Croggy right here with the ball. We have Artino in the middle making himself available, and Dingman over here. Dingman sees the defensive man back turned to him and not paying attention, and it's an easy backdoor cut going right into the score. Groggy passing it to the middle, making himself available. Backdoor man falls asleep, attack the basket, bucket. Just trying to teach you the game, Kevin, that's Bas all. Basketball's an easy game when you explain <laughs> it like that. Hey, I'll be having another class sometime <laughs> soon, all right? <laughs> your tuition charges are extremely high. I just got your bill. Zierden for three. Seven on the shot clock. And the freshman Isaiah Zierden hits the three. Now Zierden comes off the bench to help 
knock down some shots. Creighton struggling a little bit to make shots, and he comes off with an open three. As a coach's son, his dad, Don's an assistant with Washington in the NBA, former head coach in the CBA for a lot of years. Haynes and a foul on Dingman. That'll send Davon Haynes to the free throw line. And Dingman's a little upset. He feels like he moved his feet. He felt like he kept his hand straight up, but actually his right hand was bent over, and that's an easy call in college basketball. If you're not vertical, Kevin, if you're not vertical straight up and you're leaning over any, that is an automatic foul. Haynes just two for four tonight at the line. He missed a couple a moment ago. Makes that one. Greg McDermott knows he's got a real solid basketball team this year in this Creighton squad. And this Creighton team is going to do big things in the Big East. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people in their Big East play. I mean, they're equipped enough with seniors and shooting ability to compete at a high level in the Big East Conference. They've got a guy in number three that's as good as anybody in the country. Well, that just helps a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks on the drive gets the two, and Devin Brooks has six. And when you get a swing pass out of the zone and the zone rotates, you can drive right to the basket. Nice attack by DeAndre McIntyre to answer back with a two for the Golden Lions. Dingman, quick attack. Dingman with the layup. We're back and forth action now. And I like that with Dingman. You're getting pressed up full court. Once you get it past the half court and beat the press, you don't wait, you attack the basket. Teams that press don't like to get attacked at the other end. Hammond, tough catch, long three, and it's good. You think he's feeling it tonight? 22 points for Tevin Hammond on the road in Omaha. I think Tevin Hammond is making a big statement here playing in this on this stage versus this type of competition. Dingman works it inside. McDermott got the bounce, and he'll go to the line for one more. At the basket by Doug McDermott. And I think Doug McDermott was really looking for that type of finish. He, the last type of couple of field goal attempts he had, he came up short, and he was just searching for an opportunity to make contact, concentrate, and be able to finish. Look at him calling for the ball. He gets physical, puts his body into Haynes, and finishes. You know, if he has a similar season to what he's had the last couple of years at Creighton, as he steps up and hits the free throw, he's got a chance to get, become the eighth NCAA player in history to go over the 3,000-point mark. It is a remarkable career that he's put together. He's at 29 straight free throws, a new personal best for Doug McDermott, but you're talking about some of the legends of the game, and Doug McDermott's got a chance to be among them if he just plays the average that he's put up over the last couple of years. 3,000 points. That's a lot of college points in four years. Most guys give you a little bit over 2,000 that are big scores, but 3,000 points in four years. Second in the nation in scoring this year, so he's well on his way averaged 23 points a game last year averaging over 25 per game this year and he's got 25 tonight nice bounce pass down the low to Zach Hansen big man to big man interior passing big dropping it off to big see the smile on my partner's face when the big men start passing it around <laughs> the big man have to get show him a little love too McIntyre with the finger roll at a timeout taken by Arkansas Pine Bluff 446 remaining in the second half George Ivory seeing a coaching opportunity here a teaching moment also for Greg McDermott with his team up big Looks like a man whose night might be done. Doug McDermott, 25 points, nine rebounds, his team up big. And here's how he's fared this year against the other preseason first team All Americans. It's not bad. Well, just an easy day in the office for Doug McDermott, but he is definitely, definitely an All American. I mean, I know this is a preseason selection. Some of these guys, like McGarry, McGarry's not really a big offensive guy, but Marcus Smart and Doug McDermott are definitely two All Americans. That pressure causing problems for Zierden. Brooks gave him some help. 
Now Brooks driving to the basket, and Devin Brooks, who knows how to score, puts two more on the board. And he came out of there flexing a little bit. Almost a steal for the Jays on the other end. 4.28 to go, Creighton up by 30. Devin Brooks is going to be an important factor, an important piece of this team as they move into Big East play. Him coming off the bench, adding a very explosive threat in the point guard position. Jeffrey Grossell into the game for the first time tonight. The seven foot sophomore from Plano, Texas. Battled foot injuries, and that's something that a big man never wants to hear is a foot injury. As the three a little bit short, rebound tipped by Haynes out of bounds to the Blue Jays. No, you definitely don't, you know, want to hear about foot injuries from a big because they can linger on because of the size, because of the weight. Foot injuries can linger on for a long time, especially in season, and you never get a chance to recuperate. Jays with their bench on the floor right now, and a turnover. Hammond ahead to Robinson, and Robinson missing the layup on the break, and it goes out of bounds to the Blue Jays. And I think Robinson got caught in between whether to dunk or to lay up. Right here, just going for the easy score. A little, took off a little bit too wide. And Coach Ivory just put his hands on his head. I mean, that's the kind of night that you're having. And those are going to have to be teaching points after this game when you have film session the next day. And that freshman's got a bright future. There's a lot better moments than that ahead in his career as Dingman hits the three for Creighton. That has made three number 11 tonight. Or rather, number nine for the Jays from behind the arc. Nine for 27. And Creighton just doesn't have one guy who can make threes and make perimeter shots. They have an arsenal of a variety of guys that are knocked down open threes. Zach Hansen with the block, the rebound off the miss to Brooks. 3.15 to go. Creighton leading by 33, largest lead of the night for the Jays, and a quick whistle on a substitution. Alex Olson into the game, and a timeout. On the floor, 3-11 remaining in this second half, and the Creighton Blue Jays with a 79-46 lead. You know, I talked to Coach McDermott before the game, and one of the things I talked about. Hold that thought for Nikki Simpkin. We're going to take a quick timeout. 79-46. That's called a television tease. Nikki will finish that thought when we return on Fox Sports 2. Creighton 79, Arkansas Pine Bluff 46. Alongside Nikki Simpkins, I'm Kevin Kugler. The Jays started the second half 1 of 14 from the floor. Then they found their rhythm again. 10 for 11 since that time, and they've opened up their largest lead at 33. Well, there were some substitutions, some guys coming off the bench, fresh fresh energy, and guys knocking down open shots. Good ball movement, and Zach Hansen elevating for the two-handed stuff. This should be an interior passing clinic being put on today. But, but Kevin, to pick up where um, <laughs> I left off. Where, I, where I interrupted you. <laughs> We were talking about the coach player father son dynamic when I asked coach in one word to, to tell me you know where that relationship is right now and he said evolve hmm. and I thought that was a big big uh, one word right there how the relationship has evolved over the years and be able to separate between dad and son and coach and player for Arini off the bench. Back out to Olsen. Jay's clearing the bench right now. Zierden for Arini for three. And the rebound to Tevin Hammond. Hammond long lob ahead to Haynes and Davon Haynes with the catch and finish. He's got nine. That was just Davon Haynes running the court, filling the lane. Hammond's finding him. And Davon Haynes showing his athleticism to catch and play above the rim. Zierden for three, and he hits the three. Zierden with two threes off the bench. He's got six points. Well, you know Zierden's feeling it when he does a pass fake. Keeps it himself, <laughs> shoots a three, and then gives you the three fingers over the eye. And then a little defensive play on the other end for Zierden as he gets the steal. He's trying to create another opportunity for him to get a shot. Substitution for the and in for the Jays. Mobloaga Ogini. 
And O'Guinney in for Zach Hansen. Big Mo in for just the fifth time this season. And he has scored four points on the year. Olsen has scored two. Jay's getting the guys who put in all that hard work at practice a little bit of time on the court now. Absolutely, and that's what you want to do. Coach found an opportunity to get these guys in the game, show that their hard work is paid off and rewarding them with minutes. Hammond, the quick three, and the rebound to Zierden. Zierden with one minute to play here in Omaha and an 86-51 lead for Creighton. Eighteen to shoot for Zierden. The Jays about to go to eight and two. The air ball caught underneath by McIntyre. Arkansas Pine Bluff about to lose their eighth straight game. And it's been a long, hard road for this Golden Lion squad. Not only have they been on the road all year, in the midst of this road trip, they got stuck for four days in Dallas in the ice storm a couple of weeks ago, had to go back out to Oregon to make up the game they missed stuck in Dallas. As Grossell gets the two for the Blue Jays. Yeah, and that is a, that's a rough trip. And, and, it can, and it can seem rough to be on the road for all these games and the competition that they're playing, but there's a method to the madness. These games are going to help them in the long run in the SWAC conference. And they will just dribble this one out. Ball game is over. And the Creighton Blue Jays are now 8 and 2 on the season. An 88 51 victory. Their largest lead of the game becomes the final margin. And the Jays roll to 8 and 2. Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions are 2 and 8. And our Land Rover player of the game, Doug McDermott, didn't do a lot from the floor as much as he did from the line tonight. Well, he got to the free throw line, and that's what scorers do. They find a way to put the ball in the basket. If I'm not making shots or I'm struggling a little bit, then get to the free throw line. Now our Land Rover player of the game, Doug McDermott. When we return to the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska, Doug McDermott will join us courtside, 88-51. The Blue Jays with the victory at home. Creighton now 8-2 on the year, an 88-51 victory over Arkansas Pine Bluff back after a nine-day layoff and their eighth win of the season. Kevin Kugler alongside Dickie Simpkins, joined by the All-American Doug McDermott, who you told us during the break that, you know, it wasn't exactly flowing on the floor for you, but you figured out other ways to score getting to the free-throw line tonight. Yeah, you know, it was just one of those nights. You know, I got off a good start early, uh, but then kind of struggled from there. and. You know, when that happens, I like to try and get to the line and get myself going, and I thought we just did a great job moving it uh, against that zone. You guys shared the ball a lot in this game, passing it around the perimeter. What do you contribute that to? Is that because of your senior, senior leadership and playing together? What leads to all that sharing the ball? Yeah, I think you said it. We just all, we all know each other so well. We know each other's games. We've all been together for a while, and we know each other's roles. And we've worked against the zone in practice all week, uh, tried to get it to the middle as much as we could, and when it gets to the middle in the zone, usually good things happen. Is the excitement starting to build Doug, and I know you guys don't want to look ahead, but you know that Big East conference play begins in just a couple of weeks. Is everybody starting to get a little bit excited about the test that's coming? Yeah, it's definitely in the back of our minds. You know, uh, we're just really excited, you know, for that December 31st game against Marquette. You know, it's going to be rocking in here. Probably be some drunk fans in here, <laughs> but uh, we're really excited. Um, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, we're really looking forward to it. Well, congratulations on the win tonight. Eight and two on the season. Doug McDermott, our Land Rover player of the game tonight. 25 points, nine rebounds. More to come from CenturyLink Center in a moment. Jays with the win, 88-51 over the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Thanks. CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Creighton Blue Jays win here tonight, 88-51 over Arkansas Pine Bluff. The Jays had nine days off, and they got themselves back on the court tonight, Dickie Simpkins, and they did what teams are supposed to do in games like this, handle their opponent. Arkansas Pine Bluff was overmatched coming into this one, and the Jays took care of them, made short work of the Golden Lions. Absolutely. They went to the boards for second chance opportunities and they took advantage of the turnovers that the Golden Lions made and they just capitalized and then they shared the ball. When they share the ball, they look so sweet, they knock down shots and that's a big contribution to 
them being seniors, and they're going to need that going into Big East play. Now, Doug McDermott said it, looking ahead to Big East play. That's in the back of their mind, that December 31st game against Marquette. They've still got two games to play, though, before they get there. Good Cal team coming in, and then Chicago State to push DePaul into overtime the other night. Yeah, those teams are just going to be help for the preparation for the Big East. This Creighton team is definitely going to compete at a high level because of the way they shoot, because of their seniors, and I, I'm sure they're all looking forward to playing in this Big East schedule. They're looking for some help inside, and there's been a lift off the bench with the shift of Rogge into the starting lineup and Artino coming off the bench. Do you expect to see that post play continue to develop? Yeah, I think they're going to stay with that rotation. Rogge gives you perimeter shooting. Artino gives you inside presence, and I think they'll stay with that so he can give a spark off the bench. Well, that's going to do it for us from the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Coming up next, it's UFC Saturday night. Once again, our final Final score tonight from Omaha. The Creighton Blue Jays now 8-2 on the season with an 88-51 win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. UFC Saturday night is coming up next. Stay right here on Fox Sports 2. The Jays win it 88-51.